So much color, so much rhythm, such a sense of beauty. I often, when I'm up here, I think about, the, I feel the presence of what we call the mighty cloud of witnesses, all those people who made this church possible, who made this community, who fought for freedom, freedom of belief and religion over so many centuries, so many who died in the pursuit. And I, I feel that when I come into this sanctuary, especially on Sundays when we're gathered for for worship like this. But today, I'm deeply moved as I sit up here and see the photographs of so many loved ones, some of whom I know, some of whom I don't, but to see those lives and their smiles and to, to sense in my bones and in my heart the love that is here for all of them and for each person who's represented up here. I want to share with you a story about the author Franz Kafka. When Kafka was an older man, he spent a lot of time sitting in a park. And one day a little girl walked by him and she had tears running down her face. And he asked her to stop and tell him what was wrong. And she told him that her doll was missing, it was lost, and she didn't know what to do. And they looked around together, but they couldn't find the doll. So he said, come back again, I'll keep looking and see if I can find her. And a few days later, the girl returns and Kafka's there and there's no doll, but there's a note and he reads it. And the note says, I've gone off to travel around the world. Please don't worry about me, I'm fine. The girl was somewhat relieved. She returns to the park every week or so and Kafka's there with another note from the doll. The girl's too young to read, so he would read and tell her the story of the doll's adventures. Fast forward a bit and Kafka is much sicker and he went to the park one last time. And this time he brought a doll and he handed it to the girl and he said, the travels had really changed her. <laughs> Some years later, the girl is a young woman and she found the doll, wherever she had stored it, and found a little note that had been rolled up and tucked into the doll's dress. And she hadn't seen it before. And here's what it said. You will lose everyone you love, but the love will always return in new forms. I love this story. A reminder that bodies die, but love doesn't. When we pay attention, we can see how love returns in new ways and new forms long after a person is gone. In a class on our theme of death this month in October, one participant talked about how for years before she died, her mother would tell her, hey, after I'm gone, I'll, if I can, I'll find some way to come back and, and give you a sign that I'm okay and that I'm still around and we're still connected. And a few days after her mother passed, she was sitting in her backyard and she was thinking about her mom and all of a sudden a butterfly came flying into her yard over the, the fence from the neighbors and into the yard, flew right up to her and landed on her arm. This had never happened before. It's never happened since. It just sat there on her arm for a long time, peacefully, as she smiled and wondered and felt the presence of her mom and then it flew off and now she says every time she sees a butterfly flying close to her 
she wonders and thinks, is that my mom? Is she here? Is she wanting to say hello? And when she told this to the class, she looked at me and she said, is this just ridiculous? And I said, absolutely not. You know, none of us knows what happens after we die. And when you see a butterfly near you, if you feel your mom's presence, if you feel connected to her, that's wonderful. There's no reason that we should talk ourselves or think ourselves out of such a special experience. Barbara had a death in her family just this past week and her mother told her that, I know it sounds silly, but I felt George's presence just the day before he died. It was as if he came to say goodbye. This is uncharacteristic of her mother who's the furthest thing from a, a deeply religious or fundamentalist type person. People we love who have died, their love returns in new forms, if, especially if we're awake and open to it. The, look, when I'm reading a children's story to my kids, I, I notice the cadence of my mother's voice when she used to read stories to me when I was a kid. When I cook one of my grandmother's recipes, I, I feel her presence. I'm reminded of her hospitality. When life begins to feel over, overwhelming and I don't know what to do, I'm not sure, I'm worried or afraid, you know, I can hear my father's voice reminding me, trust yourself and have faith that things will work out. And these days, I think of Dr. Wolf's voice and imagine how often it will continue to come back to me and encourage me as we go along. They say that a person dies twice, that the first time is the death of their body, but then their final death is the last time someone speaks their name. How can we keep the memories and the names and the love of those who we've lost alive? This ritual we're celebrating today, it's a colorful and a dynamic way that people from Mexico and other parts of Central and South America have found to celebrate and remember and feel the connection with loved ones long past. It's a ritual that's growing in popularity, not just here, but around the country and Canada and around the world as people from Latin America are moving into different parts of the world. And rituals around death, they exist in all different cultures and throughout time. It's a, just something that people do. The, Torajan people in the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia, they keep the bodies of their loved ones around. They keep them close. For them, death is just one step in a long, unfolding physical, emotional, spiritual process. For weeks, months, even years sometimes, their loved ones whose bodies are mummified are cared for at home. They're dressed and they're placed in the home and they're offered plates of food. Death is not a closed door in their mind as much as it is a gauze veil. Not a break as much as another kind of connection. Tarajans believe that the profound human connection lasts long after someone has died. Now I realize that it's unlikely that you're going to adopt the ritual practice of the Torajan peoples, but I ask what might you consider or what do you do to keep the connection to those who've died in your life alive and present and awake? It may be a, a photograph on the nightstand, a ritual on their birthday, a trip to the cemetery, their ashes on the mantle. Do you have their favorite flower maybe planted in your garden each year? If not, then how do you do it? Let's not wait for a stranger in the park to notice our tears. Let's not wait to find a note in a coat pocket 20 years from now. Instead, let's invite the dead into our life and into our lives in meaningful ways. Let yourself feel the connection 
Because love never dies. As long as you are here, their love abides. The one who you love and lose is no longer where they were before. They are now wherever you are. Amen. visiting with us online today. We love connecting with people all across the country and around the world sharing our powerful message of love beyond belief. There's something new happening here. You can now join All Souls as a virtual member. Our virtual membership is designed for friends who live outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma and who want to engage with All Souls in a meaningful way. You can be part of an expanding family, a global family really, wherever you are. If you live in Oklahoma, Ohio, or Orange County, California, Canada, or Cameroon. By becoming a virtual member, you'll be able to deepen your connections with members and friends here in Tulsa and with members wherever you are. Each week, you'll receive special All Souls content tailored for you, our virtual members. Virtual members have access to pastoral care, to personal prayers, and also receive invitations to exclusive web events. You can learn more, and if you're ready, you can become a virtual member today by visiting allsoulschurch.org forward slash virtual membership. We're grateful our ministries are having a positive impact on your life, and we want to share the good news of Love Beyond Belief with more and more people. So no matter what, we need your support to keep this ministry growing and thriving, so please consider making a gift today. You can do so by texting Love BB for Love Beyond Belief to 73256 or simply visit our website. You are a blessing in our lives. May you be blessed. And be a blessing.